Hi all, I have another fascinating and instructive game to show you today. Stockfish 11 against Leela ID 62565. So the opening scene set for this is the Sicilian defense four knights variation. So knight f3, e6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6. And we're looking at now a rare six move uh, alternative for our exploration today, bishop c4, which by all rights seems actually unjustified. Black has already got a pawn on e6, Is it, isn't it just blunting the bishop? How can this possibly be useful, this move, bishop c4? Now, the recommendation in the excellent course, uh, King's Crusher TV slash Sicilian Four Knights, is to play bishop b4. Here we see a slightly rarer move played by Leela, which uh, rebels against uh, the mainstream moves, actually. Uh, it does have a tactical basis to it, uh, but it's pretty uh, rare, this next move. Queen c7. So this is kind of interesting to check out. What did Leela have in mind? Is it just that the queen is kind of potentially attacking the bishop, or is there another point to queen c7? We see bishop e3. So Stockfish is not worried about the bishop uh, being potentially loose. It can capture on knight takes with queen takes if needed. Uh, you might be intrigued about the tempo game, knight db5. This uh, knight coming here is mostly harmless after queen b8. So the queen can persist on this diagonal and get ready for what black wants to play anyway, a6 and b5. And if g3 for playing bishop f4, it's it's absolutely harmless. In fact, this would wreck white's position and lose material because of e5. There's no punishment for black here after e5. White is losing material with very little compensation. So imagine the knight does have to go back here. Uh, so say knight d4, and then black gets in this b5. Uh, this, you might think, is a little bit sad that... Um, the bishop might be hemmed in, but actually even better than taking is queen c7. Just leaving two pieces uh, attacked. And this is actually quite a nice variation for black. Black's going to get back the piece and uh, have a very comfortable position. Uh, so here um, also we can look at, as well as knight db5, uh, the other knight going to uh, b5. Queen again drops back, and then again knight. Uh, the knight is kicked. This this is going to be uh, fine as well for black. So uh, yeah, it's really mostly harmless to attack the queen. So it's, it is an interesting move and quite quite kind of a novel move in this particular position. Bishop e3 was played by Stockfish. Uh, so we have a6. White castles. Knight takes d4. Queen takes d4. And one of the perks of the queen being on c7, it wasn't just looking at the bishop, we have the direct move, knight g4, so threatening chatmate. Stockfish manages to see this tactical threat, yes, e5 is played. Uh, you might think, well, isn't there a concession here that uh, black can grab the dark square bishop? Or is it too terrifying to give white that f file? So this is an interesting decision. Uh, point here. The queen is hitting the knight, the knight is loose. Uh, Leela actually um, plays knight takes e3. Doesn't go for knight takes e5. There might be some very dangerous compensation emerging here of the knight takes, the bishop dropping back. Uh, this position looks a little bit scary, uh, potentially uh, scary, but uh, in the example here uh, it's it seems okay for black. Black seems okay. It's opposite color bishops. Maybe black could, could potentially hold. Nevertheless, Leela here just went for the dark square bishop and not minding the potential wrath of this f file. So a very interesting decision, uh, not fearing the dynamics here. f takes was played. The queen can't take because the queen takes c4. So f takes. So this is the deal that's been made. Stockfish has compromised its pawn structure. Uh, it has dynamic play though. And uh, how dangerous is this? We have bishop c5. And now queen f4. And now a very interesting and strong looking move, it seems, is played here. What would you play with black 
if I gave you five seconds in this position, would you routinely castle or would you do something else? Okay, Luna actually plays f5, making great use of that bishop here. Uh, White played queen g3. If e takes f6, that leads to big trouble after queen takes and then bishop takes e3 check. That's winning material. So queen g3, black castles now, and just in time protecting f5 actually, because that's a pinned pawn, but uh, rook takes, rook takes f5. So just in time, everything seems stable enough. Rook a d1. And now b5, bishop b3, bishop b7. And to me, this is kind of beautiful how these bishops seem to be uh, working with each other on this on these two diagonals. There's an aesthetic to the black position, which I kind of appreciate for its own sake, actually. Uh, what does white claim here is going on, in fact? Well, there is the nifty looking move, knight e2. The knight looks... To have a nice square actually on f4 at least we have king h8 and now h4 uh, which negates the possibility of g5 sometimes which might be useful for black so putting a clamp on g5 in advance of the knight going to f4 and in fact maybe even h5 is useful black dissuades that with g6 in advance of any h5 knight f4 rook f7 and now white plays c4. This is a very, very interesting move, trying to loosen the black structure. In particular, uh, for example, well, b takes c4 was played, keeping things fairly, you know, forcing. But isolating the a pawn, you might consider, well, what about b4? It seems bishop a4, this position, uh, it should be okay for black, though, this type, type of scenario. It should be okay as well. There doesn't seem to be anything too dangerous uh, for Leela here. So maybe that was a viable alternative potentially. But here we see b takes c4 which does isolate the a pawn. Uh, we have bishop takes c4, rook g8, knight h3. On a3 here uh, it seems g5 might actually be possible. For example doubling the rooks now and this position should be great for black. Black's going to really coordinate very heavily on g2 here after taking on g5. So uh, we have knight h3 actually. Uh, now h6, as though there might be uh, g5 in the near future. Rook d3, bishop e7, rook c3. And you might wonder, well, what is this rook c3? This, this is one of the... Um, more philosophical issues I have sometimes with with AB engines they seem to not care how kind of unesthetic the moves are I mean there's a concrete basis for sure uh, but the aesthetics to me of the black position uh, are much more interesting here than white's play and what is white's play really revolving around well let's see queen b6 rook b3 uh, so some harassment it seems queen a7 rook c1 bishop e4 we have bishop f1 rook fg7 so black's play looks kind of beautiful for g5 and pretty logical to coordinate everything on g2 it seems you know centrally aligned to a very strong theme of attacking the king whilst white's play here after queen e1 seems more about winning the a pawn we have g5 h5 which at least for the moment contains the g-file bishop d5 bishop c4 bishop a8 queen c3 a5 and yes there's this a pawn which is a little bit of a liability it seems after rook b5 if white had played uh knight f2 it seems here bishop b4 and this position is kind of unpleasant after g4, black can look forward to rook g5 with a big advantage. So white is trying to do something on the queen side. Just winning this pawn seems uh, to content Stockfish for the moment. Bishop c5 though, hitting e3. Uh, and that's actually ignored. Rook takes a5. So was that the point? Bishop takes e3. Actually, uh, Lila plays a different move here, which is uh, 
probably much much stronger queen b7 threatening chatmate but also unveiling the idea of bishop before winning the exchange so it is a kind of double attack move white defends g2 but uh, now bishop b4 winning an exchange the queen is protected by the bishop so there's no queen b3 it doesn't matter uh, we have rook b5 bishop takes rook takes bishop takes rook takes c3 so black is now the exchange up but how easy is this we have uh, a similar scenario to yesterday's game there's two connected past pawns maybe these are pretty dangerous we have rook c8 king f2 and now the other rook comes to g8 that knight goes back rook c5 hitting e5 knight e2 rook gc8 hitting the bishop that's moved back a pair of rooks come off and again now hitting e5 with rook c5 a4 so are these two connected past pawns worth their weight in gold king g7 g3 king f8 king e2 now rook takes e5 king d2 so this is starting to get a little bit tricky you can imagine if white just gets in one or two moves uh, this could be extremely winning for white quite easily imagine b4 b5 put in and then a5 a6 it starts to get really dangerous for these pawns they're just crashing through it seems so something has to be done here quite quickly um, so what does black play here if i give you five seconds uh, it seems like a very interesting move okay black to play here f4 so not so trying to target the h pawn which would give black her own outside pass pawn potentially if this pawn can be knocked out then there's an outside pass pawn and these two pieces might not be able to handle that very effectively and this bishop of course is on the, on the queening square so this is an interesting idea to try and get the outside h pawn e takes e takes g takes rook takes h5 b4 so it's two connected pass pawns versus one pass pawn over here at the moment check rook b2 so encouraging b5 <laughs> this does look rather scary king e7 the king though looks set to come to the rescue here a5 king d8 a6 the bishop goes to g2 so keeping an eye on a8 and also for promoting her own pawn potentially knight a4 hitting the rook the rook moves knight c5 king c7 we have a7 king b6 so we have a blockade here and the bishop's eyeing a8 knight takes d7 check and that pawn snapped off so the two connected pass pawns are being dismantled it seems that one drops and it looks to be uh, rather difficult now for white to claim any real compensation after bishop d5 so yes this looks absolutely winning material up without too many issues e5 was played here uh, this gets a nice blockade point potentially on e6 so bishop e6 here <clears throat> bishop g6 and uh yeah there's there's some um moves to win e5 now so e5 drops and is this easy to win though it is the exchange up and with that extra pawn it's it looks fairly straightforward so let's see just for the record okay some high level shuffling and some more high level shuffling <laughs> and and here actually white resigns it both sides felt it was actually hopeless for white and white was just resigned here at move 95. Uh, it is technically winning it is a technical exercise but uh it it seems actually convincing enough to me to stop here black black is going to win this eventually okay so i thought this is another interesting uh kind of novelty move uh from lula in this uh six move alternative rare six move alternative bishop c4 so you might think bishop b4 to be fair bishop b4 is kind of in the spirit you might want to pick a particular theme as well as the opening kind of keep in the spirit of the four knights opening and arguably bishop b4 uh 
uh, is a kind of recurring theme that you could uh, use. But this this showed the that Queen C7 can be potentially uh, interesting. I felt so worth showing this exceptional case. This kind of novelty move, Queen C7 against the Bishop C4. So I hope hope you found that pretty interesting. Uh, we will be exploring more of the main lines of this whole opening to make it distinctive. Uh, which is like knight db5, one of the main lines. We'll, we'll have a look at some key games in that soon. Uh, so if you want to check out this amazing Sicilian Defense Four Knights course, uh, this might be one of the most underrated variations of the Sicilian Defense going because it does have some unique properties which seem to have been obscured by its use as uh, its use as a kind of transpositional tool for the Sicilian Sveshnikov. So Kings Crusher TV slash Sicilian Four Knights. And the repertoire there is is kind of more thematically oriented, uh, so you you should be able to learn and reuse themes more easily if you follow the recommended lines here in that course. Okay, thanks so much.